What's going on you guys, this is Tech HD coming at you with a brand new video and today we're going to be taking a look at Netgear's latest addition to the Nighthawk lineup and this is something that I've been asking for a while now. This is their XR1000 model and it offers a lot of the latest features like 802.11ax, OFDMA support, 160MHz support and much more. So let's dive in and see how the XR1000 overall performs. So now taking a look at what you get inside the box, you get the quick start guide, the four external antennas, the AC power plug, a Cat6 Ethernet cable, and the XR1000 router itself. Taking a look at the ports on the back, you have the two antenna ports at the end, you also have the reset pinhole, a USB 3.0 port, four gigabit LAN ports and one gigabit WAN port, the power port, and the power on and off button. On the front, you have the Wi-Fi on and off button and the WPS button, as well as you have the indicator lights for the power, internet, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz band, USB 3.0, and the four ethernet ports. Taking a look at the side, you have the other antenna ports and each antenna is actually for a specific port. So on the antenna, it'll tell you if it's for antenna port number one, two, or three. So you just find the corresponding ones and screw them in and you are all set. Now taking a look at the specs of the XR1000 is a dual band Wi-Fi 6 router that offers up to 600 megabits per second on the 2.4 gigahertz band and up to 4800 megabits per second on the 5 gigahertz band, totaling it to 5400 megabits per second. It uses a 1.5 gigahertz triple core processor. It has many features like beamforming technology, MU MIMO, 160 megahertz channel support, WPA3 security, and OFDMA support because of the 802.11ax. And it uses NetDuma's Duma OS 3.0, combining both up-to-date hardware and software. Now, setting up the XR1000 is very simple. First, you turn off the current Wi-Fi and modem. Then you start to unplug the router and replace it with the XR1000. Next, plug everything into the XR1000. Turn on the power to your modem, then the router, then you are all set. Now, let's go over to the computer to set everything up. On the web browser, you're going to want to type in the XR1000 IP address, which is typically 192.168.1.1 for Netgear, but if it's not on the bottom, there should be the default IP address. You can also connect and set it up wirelessly with the provided preset Wi-Fi settings that's on the sticker on the XR1000, but I normally do wired setup since it's more reliable. Once you're in the setup window, it's going to check to see if it's detecting the internet from your modem. After that, it's going to automatically check what your internet speeds are for the download and upload using speed tests, and you can confirm it or enter it yourself if it's wrong. And I'm paying for 400 megabits per second on the download speed and 20 megabits per second on the upload speed with Spectrum. So just to let you guys know. After, it's going to ask you some personal questions like setting up the password and security questions for the admin, as well as setting up the SSID and password for the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz band. After that, you are all set and the router is just checking to see if it has the latest firmware drivers. If there is an update needed, it will start updating itself and then it will perform a reboot. After that, you are all set up and you are now in the Duma OS for the XR1000. Okay you guys, so now we are in the Duma OS software for the XR1000 and I'm not going to go so much in depth with the Duma OS 3.0 software because I did that in my last video with the NetDuma R2 router. I just want to show you guys what I have enabled, what I have set up for the XR1000 to give me a low ping as possible and a nice stable connection for both gaming and live streaming. So the first thing is on the main screen, I have a geo filter map uh, pinned in as well as I have my network map and my network snapshot and my network overall overview and you can see here in the geo filter i have my xbox my pc my playstation and i have it set to uh the polygon mode and i have that set to texas most of texas and most of new york as well because i still play with some people uh back at home in my old town in new york and but i still want to get fairly good servers so i want to have as low as a ping as possible and then when I'm not playing with my friends in New York, I'll switch it back to the regular geo filter mode. And I have it set to about 500 miles. But then here, I'm usually hanging out with them. And then my network map, you can see I have over like about 50 devices. And I just want to show you guys real quick. The major thing that I do want for a future update as far as for the device manager is I want to have subfolders. So mainly because 802.11ax uh, gives you that capability of you could connect so many smart devices and not have any issues. And that's the main thing that uh, Wi-Fi 6 is advertising. So what I want to do is I have, I'm basically the main like reason why I have so many uh, devices connected. I'm like usually that guy. And so I have so many smart plugs, thermostats, um, locks and smart cameras, security cameras and lights and all that 
And so what I want to do is have it all in subfolders. So you can see right here, all of these are HS103s. These are smart plugs. Uh, all of the LifeX bulbs, I want it to be in the subfolder. So then when I so I could organize it and make it less cluttered. And so with that, then I could click on it and then have it be expanded a lot more, which is really nice in my opinion. So I would really love that feature. But just to show you guys, most of the stuff is connected to the 2.4 gigabit uh, gigahertz band. And then most of my other stuff, like my gaming products and my Echo stuff is on the 5 gigahertz band. And then some of it is wired and then some of them are currently offline for the time being. The major thing that I want to show you guys is my QoS functionality. Let me go ahead and add my password and username. And so as far as QoS goes, I have it set to about 70 or 75 percent on the congestion control. I have it set to 75. And like I said, I'm paying for 420 megabits per second. And then on the bandwidth allocation, that's where I have it different. So I have live streaming and gaming set to 20 and then everything else is set to the lower possible on the download speed as well as on the upload speed as well. So that's the main thing is I'm mainly prioritizing live streaming and gaming capability. Uh, and these, all these other stuff don't need so much uh, bandwidth. So that's the major thing that I have set up. So on the wireless setup, I have OFDMA enabled for both the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz band, as well as I have the AX enabled. Of course, I don't have Smart Connect enabled because that will mean that I have to combine both the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz band as one SSID. And I don't want that. I want to be able to make sure what's connected to what band. I have the 20 and 40 megahertz enabled, of course. I don't have WPA3 enabled because for some reason I am having issues with devices uh, connecting to it and it's not recognizing the SSID. So I'm still at the WPA2 until they come out with an update for that. And then of course all the other stuff, the highest megabits per second on both of the bands and the modes set to all 100%. Now going into the advanced wireless setup, that's why I want to make sure that I have my beamforming enabled to increase my speed, reliability, and range for all of my devices as well as I have MU MIMO enabled and I wanted to make sure I have uh, AX enabled once again. So just wanted to show you guys that. And as far as for gaming goes, depending on the gaming console or the uh, game that you're playing on for me mainly Call of Duty I have my PC set up for port forwarding so I have all of these to give me an open NAT type so I just wanted to show you guys that as well as well as to make sure that you have UP uh, UPnP enabled uh, make sure that that's turned on that should be turned on by default and so it could make sure to give you an open NAT type if it's not giving you an open NAT type then you will need to do port forwarding to manually do it but for the most part this should be uh, enabled by default and then if you're still not having an open NAT type then you need to do the port forwarding functionality and then for the most part that is basically it and then what I do is I do a quick run test to make sure that I am getting the speeds need needed and I get a really low ping so let's say for example on my speed test on the upload I'm getting over 20 me megabits per second which is what I'm paying for which is great and then we'll see on the download speed I'm getting over 400 megabits per second which is also great so that should be an A plus rating and then I should be good for 4k uh, streaming and stuff like that so you see Netflix speed ultra HD which is perfect 473 out of 423 out of 20 on my ping test I am averaging on like around ooh, like around 10 13 milliseconds on the ping which is nice okay so 10.35 and then i have a 1.26 millisecond jitter and then i have zero packet loss which is excellent and then the ping test on the under load we have 10.56 milliseconds and then on the upload it went really high for a second and then it went right back down uh let's see we're averaging around 20 milliseconds okay 30 milliseconds and then on the download let's see how we're doing around the same uh, compared to the upload so we're doing about 20 30 16.13 milliseconds so a plus rating all around which is great so my my xr 1000 is set up perfectly to get the best speeds the lowest ping possible so i'm all good so that's basically how i have the xr 1000 set up to give me the lowest ping possible to give me a nice stable connection and to make sure that all my devices are getting the bandwidth needed and as well not sacrificing my live streaming and my gaming capability still getting my shots connecting and registering and everything is working great so now let's show you guys a gameplay footage to see how it overall performs all right, you guys, so now we're going to be doing some gameplay ping tests. We are playing Call of Duty Modern Warfare. You can see on the top left, I have my latency set up because we are playing on the PC. And we're going to be seeing how this goes. We're going to see how easy it is for them to kill me, 
how easy for me to, to kill them and if my shots are connecting and registering all of that so let's see how this goes we're playing on scrapyard i'm going to be running the hdr as well as the m13 and we are looking at around 23 milliseconds as far as latency is going and it doesn't seem like it's fluctuating at all right now but we'll see how it goes as far as gameplay they saw me and i killed him shots were connecting on both ends died there <laughs> okay so i swapped over to the mp5 because i need a little bit of speed and my shots seem to be connecting right there very nice 23 milliseconds still saw fluctuate a little bit went up and down i'm focusing a lot on the latency so we'll see how this goes nice oh my god i almost died there A lot of people are aiming at me. So far so good. So we are averaging around 19 to 23 milliseconds. Shots and everything are connecting. I haven't really had any issues so far. Nothing as far as lagging goes. Ooh. heard you saw somebody over there so I'm gonna just throw a grenade oh there's too many of you guys oh my god oh, if that guy wasn't looking at me I would have gotten a nice three piece hi oh you're staying back there too buddy Somebody's standing back there, and he just saw him die. Oh, I just almost died. Not bad, not bad so far. Latency is not fluctuating much at all, which I really like. So shots is very consistent. As far as they are all registering for the most part. I haven't had really any issues so far. Very nice. Oh, I got my beetle. Oh my god, that fucking dragon breath. Oh, let's call this bad boy in. We're just gonna call it right there in the middle. I'm also gonna call this in for a bit. Nice double. Oh, they're inside. Oh, perfect. Get a nice double. Oh, quad feed. Two with the Vito, two with the Predator Missile, very nice. Oh, where you going? Don't be running away. If I don't get you, my Vito will. Nice, nice, nice. We could probably even catch up and win this if we do. If we play our cards right, but they're going to be all staying inside. Oh, you're going to try a challenge? Oh, they're all inside. Yeah, they're just all inside. Oh, so close. Oh, you got the dragon breath. I would have died. Come on, Beetle. Beetle's getting these kills to make sure we possibly win. Oh my god, we actually brought it back and won. Nice. Okay, so yeah, about 19 to 23 milliseconds. Very nice. That's what I was averaging. All my shots were connecting for the most part as well as for them. I was easily dying. They were easily dying. I didn't see much of a lag or anything like that. Um, 26 and 14, very nice. But for the most part, the XR1000 uh, did its job as far as geo filtering and QoS. I haven't had any issues, and that is really nice.
The Nighthawk XR1000 is a beast of a gaming router when it comes to both hardware and software. There are very little things that the XR1000 is lacking as far as specs goes, and it performs really good with not only gaming, but also with smart home devices thanks to the new Wi-Fi 6 and OFDMA feature. When playing FPS games like Call of Duty, my shots seem to always connect and actually register, which is great. And compared to NetDuma's R2 router that I actually reviewed, my ping actually dropped a bit more, which is always a plus. You also get all the latest features that the R2 router was lacking like beamforming, MU MIMO, and Wi-Fi 6 which all improves speed, range, and reliability which is great for gamers who are not set up wired and are relying on Wi-Fi and much farther away from the XR1000. So I also tested it out in my living room with my Xbox One X on the 5GHz band and it still performed very well with my shots still connecting and registering and I didn't have any issues. Now I don't really have any cons but more of recommendations for the next model that Netgear comes out with that will be a step up from the XR1000 that I would personally love to have. One of them being tri-band and that will really help with organizing what's connecting to what band and you'll have two 5GHz bands, one being for gaming devices and the other one could just be for anything else. That will also help with QoS and overall reliability since there will be less congestion in the 5GHz bands. The second thing would be to have a 2.5 gigabit ethernet port since for PC gamers, a lot of motherboards has a second ethernet port that supports 2.5 gigabit so offer that to really take that advantage and also offer link aggregation like they did with the XR700. For the same reason, motherboards and switches like the SX10 which I actually have right behind me has support for link aggregation so you're just taking advantage of increasing bandwidth and reliability. The third thing would be to have more ethernet ports. For me personally, I have a lot of devices that are set up wired like my Xbox, PlayStation, two PCs, security cameras, and a smart home hub. And so four ethernet ports just isn't enough for me anymore. Give us seven or eight LAN ports and with more and more smart devices in a house where you need hubs and stuff connected to the router, I need a switch in order to give me those extra ports. And it's a good thing that I have a good one like the SX10, which is also from Netgear Nighthawk Pro gaming. Like I said, these aren't really cons and I know that not everyone will need these features but I would love for Netgear to come out with a model that has them so that you can have a model that fits everyone's needs. But overall, I love the XR1000 for what it has to offer and if you want the latest specs and features for gaming, especially with the new Xbox and PS5 coming out, I would definitely recommend the XR1000 as far as performance and reliability goes. But let me know what you guys think down in the comments below and everything will be linked down in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching, please like, comment, and subscribe, turn on post notifications so that you guys could be notified whenever I upload a new video. Follow me on Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitch. As always, it's TechHD. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace!